Hello guys and welcome back to the 2023-24 STPN NHL season previews. Today we got the Calgary Flames, a team that had a wacky wild roller coaster year last season. Now with Daryl Suter of Fire, they're looking to maybe rebound, maybe getting back in a playoff spot. But can this Flames team actually be a playoff team? Well, we're going to be answering that question and a ton of others as we break down the complete offseason to see what is next. But first, let's talk about our folks over at Sports Interaction. Get in on the action and make your bet with Sports Interaction. Baseball and all the other sports going strong right now. USA and everything. You can bet before the game live and in play with all your favorite teams. So go to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. 19 plus and please play responsibly. Now, this Flames team has been really in flux over the last year. We have, of course, Suter gone, True Living gone. They've now filled those positions up. And coming in for the head coaching spot will be Ryan Huska, who's been an assistant coach for the Flames, so likely not too much of an adjustment. Now, when we look at the pure offseason additions, you got Igor Shredagovich, who they acquired in the Devils from the Tyler to Foley deal. He could be interesting maybe on that third line, 30 points in 75 games this last year, but an interesting dual threat player who brings some solid speed. We'll see how much more potential he's able to give, but in Calgary could be solid. You also got Jordan Osterley, who will likely be on a depth pairing uh, for the Flames. 11 points in 52 games with Detroit last year. Don't expect anything crazy there. But then we go into the subtractions this offseason, of course, highlighted by Tyler Toffoli, who I don't think many people realize is as big of a loss as he is. I mean, there was a lot of people that, that requested trades that wanted to be out. Tyler Toffoli was the only one dealt, but was maybe the best one besides maybe Elias Lindholm. 73 points in 82 games this last year, 34 goals. After Calgary's offense just completely dried up, Tyler Toffoli was having great seasons, his best season, in fact. And to me, I think that'll be a huge loss, especially under that top six. You got Milan Lucic, who likely won't be too much of a loss going to the Boston Bruins. You got Matt Goldstone, who ends up retiring. Trevor Lewis, who goes to the Kings. Troy Stetcher and Nick Ritchie, who they acquired from the Coyotes, both going into free agency. Nick Ritchie not signing with anybody yet. But for the Flames, if they're going to reach a playoff spot once again, it really is going to rely on those players, those big players rebounding. The first player to watch, in my opinion, this next year for Calgary is Jonathan Huberdeau, who got 55 points in 79 games this last year after having a whopping 115 points the year prior to Florida. He was decimated by Daryl Sutter's system and was the player most likely just completely kept from true success. In a much more likely free-flowing system, Huberto could still get back to great levels. Maybe not that 115-point scoring, but maybe around a point per game, maybe a little bit more around that 90-point range. But for my second Flames player to watch this next year, you got his trade buddy in Mackenzie Weger, who I think can still be a number one defenseman in this league, but defensively, even though he had some great moments last year, offensively, it took a little bit of a step back. 31 points in 81 games after having 44 points the year prior. I think offensively, with the puck movement, there's a lot more potential of Weger that wasn't tapped into last year that hopefully will be properly utilized this next season. And now moving on to my third player to watch for this Flames roster, I got Jacob Peltier, who's in a really unique position as a rookie. In 24 games this last year, got seven points, looked pretty solid, and even though Suter gave him really not that much opportunity throughout most of those games, he was still able to put up solid production and looked good as a rookie. He's a player that can bring some silky skill, can know where to play, can know where to be in a top six position, likely on that second line. Maybe we see Peltier in the Calder race. But let's go through and grade their forwards, defense, and goaltending. And starting out with the forward group, there's going to be a really interesting core here with players likely rebounding, like Lindholm, like Huberto, like Kadri, like Mangiapane, and also a lot of younger players too taking that next step like Peltier, Coronado, and Zari likely coming into the roster. Coronado likely on that third line, I would say. So a lot of youth being infused into that lineup finally for the first time in a long time, which is what they needed. I would give the four group a B minus. I don't think it's anything that's absolutely special, but there can be some good bright spots here and it won't be a huge weakness. Now going on to the defense, and this should be the best part of this Flames team, and I would say it definitely is, but it's not overwhelmingly amazing. You saw Hannafin take a little bit of a step back this last year. Same thing with Uyghur, kind of the same thing as well with Chris Tana, but they still got great names and they still got players that can play great. Those are all still top four defensemen and Zadorov on the bottom pair is still solid. I'm going to give the defense a B plus. Overall, very solid core here. That isn't going to be the issue if the Flames miss the playoffs. 
Flames. But then we go into the goaltending, and to me, this is the most contentious part of this Flames roster, because you got Jacob Marstrom and Daniel Vladar, Vladar right now, and especially with Vladar, they didn't trade anybody on this goaltending tandem, which to me is a mistake, because Dustin Wolf to me, is 100% uh, ready and healthy right now. He should at least be getting backup minutes, and I'm kind of disappointed that Calgary didn't trade one of those guys to make room for that. Still, Markstrom likely will have maybe a little bit of a better year this next season, but still, I don't think it's going to be anything overly special. I'm going to give the goaltending a C. Nothing that's the worst in the league, but it's not going to be a strength, that's for sure. But after all those grades, to me, the biggest question mark is how far will that rebound take them? How far will players like Huberto and Lindholm and Markstrom and, and Mackenzie Weger being a little bit better take them? To me, I think they'll still kind of be in the same range. As for standings predictions, I have them getting 88 to 92 points, being right behind the Vancouver Canucks, getting sixth in the Pacific Division, and likely selling off a few assets as well. The deadline, maybe even being one of the biggest sellers of the deadline, and that will result in a few losses down the stretch that they wouldn't have had otherwise. But to me, this Flames team is kind of right in the middle of the NHL and is in the worst place to be. They have some good younger players coming up, so that'll be a good story for them. But just overall, looking at everything, the forwards, defensive, goaltending, I know it's overused word to say, but it is kind of it. Let us know in the comments down below, though. Do you see the Flames being a playoff team? Will they miss? What is the direction of this Flames roster? I want to know all your thoughts. Of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, and share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next season preview. 32 days, 32 season previews. Goodbye.